Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about deleting records with Entity Framework Core. So this video is going to be covering the D in our CRUD acronym. Again, CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. CRUD helps us identify the four different ways that we need to interact with our data and that we need to code for. So deleting records with Entity Framework is pretty straightforward and very similar to how we worked with updating records. The first thing that we need to do is go and retrieve the record that we want to delete. Now we do this by asking the DB set. We can do a first or default and grab that one record. And then once we have that record in memory as a variable, we can pass that record or that variable to the remove method on that DB set. Then finally, to commit those changes to the database, we once again call the save changes method on the context class. So as you can see, the process is pretty straightforward and very similar to, like I said, what we do with the update method. So let's just go ahead and hop into Visual Studio and take a look at this in action. So first, let's go ahead and create our new action on our controller. It's going to be a type uh, public access modifier I action result. And we're going to call this action uh, delete customer and for our delete customer the first thing that we need to do is actually go and get the instance of the customer that we want to delete so this is very similar to what we did here with our update customer we're going to create an object of type dim customer and we're going to set it to the result that we find from this first or default so let's go ahead and do that we're going to say dim customer which is the data type and we're going to say just call this deleted customer we're going to set it equal to db and again for those of you who are not aware maybe you're coming to this video and you haven't seen any of the previous videos db is in reference to this private uh, this private variable that we created here of type adventureworks context and that adventure con uh, adventureworks context is actually our context that gives us access to our database and we've called that variable db so we're getting to our context and on our context we're going to go look for the dim customer db set collection okay so this is a db set a collection of dim customer and in that db set we're just going to be looking for the first or default and once again since we've been messing around with this tom burke uh account right we had this tom burke mr tom burke and his customer alternate key is i don't care we're going to continue on with that theme for this video. So we're going to do C goes to C customer alternate key. And this once again is just going in doing a, uh, a retrieval of any record or the first record that it finds that matches where the customer alternate key is equal to I don't care. So we're going to do I don't care. Okay. So now that we have Mr. Tom Burke put into our deleted customer variable here, then what we're going to do, let me just go to the end and hit a new space. Here we go. So now all we need to do is actually on the DB dim customer DB set, there is a remove method and the remove method accepts as a parameter a type of dim customer so some sort of object of type dim customer and that would be our deleted customer right here so we'll go ahead and copy that variable name there and then last but not least we need to actually save these changes to the database so to do that we call db save changes okay so let's go ahead and save that and now we need to return some sort of redirect. Now, since we deleted our customer, I don't, uh, you know, with the customer key, I don't care. And we're not going to be able to pull that buck up. We should probably just go ahead and do our customer list. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy that. We'll do a return redirect to action. And we're calling customer list and just take a peek up here the customer list action does not require any parameters so we don't need to pass anything in all right so customer list let's go ahead and save our changes here 
and we can go ahead and run our application. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is actually go to customers and we're gonna look for the, uh, we're gonna go to the index action and I wanna show you that Mr. Tom Burke is in fact still in our application. So I'm gonna uh, do a query here and I'm gonna say customer key equals I don't care because that was again the key to find Mr. Tom Burke. And so we can see sure enough, there is our application showing Mr. Tom Burke, uh, his information right there. So let's go ahead and call the delete customer action. So we're gonna go to our customer's controller. I'm gonna say delete customer. And that's gonna actually delete Mr. Tom Burke. And we see that we get immediately redirected to our customer list. And that's exactly the behavior that we expected to have happen because we've got our return redirect action customer list. And now if we wanna go look for Mr. Burke, we'll see that he should be missing now. So if we once again do index, we do customer key, I don't care, and I hit enter, we'll see that we get a 500 error indicating that there was a problem displaying the information for Mr. Tom Burke. Now, this is interesting that we get this 500 error, and this is actually gonna lead us into the next, uh, the next video. We're gonna talk about how to avoid having these kind of errors. How can you program your, your actions to, uh, to catch for these instances where there's some sort of problem uh, in trying to retrieve the data from the database and still handle that uh, in a graceful manner so that your users don't get confused. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, please don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop me a line in the comments section of this video, and I'll be happy to answer.